to the Capital Discussions Roundtable. I'm Tom Dunnemaker with our guest, John Dempsey from Optionscape. Before we get started, a quick disclaimer, the Capital Discussions is not a broker dealer or an investor advisor. This presentation is for educational purposes only. We don't know your situation and have no way of knowing what level of risk is appropriate for you. We're not making any specific trade recommendations. The risk of loss in trading options can be substantial, so please be aware of all of your risks prior to placing any trades. Hypothetical computer simulated trades are believed to be accurately represented. However, actual profit or loss may vary due to market factors such as liquidity, slippage, and commissions. And this is, once again, for educational purposes only. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and, and welcome John. It's the first time you've been with us on the roundtable. And uh, um, we were talking a little bit before the, the meeting started. And uh, a little bit in common, we were both a uh, long time in the Chicago area. John's still there. I've moved on. Um, but John, you can go ahead and share your screen now and maybe uh, tell people a little bit about you since it's the first time you've been here. Okay, okay. Well, good morning, and uh, thank you, uh, thank you very much for this opportunity to present uh, Optionscape this morning. Uh, I, uh, my name is John Dempsey, as Tom said, and I've been on the management team with uh, Optionscape for uh, for the past several years. Uh, my my day to day Optionscape management role is is pretty much the head of uh, global derivatives education. I've spent the past just a little bit of background on myself. Um, I spent uh, the past uh, 36 years on six continents in 23 countries, uh, working mainly with uh, option market makers, traders, brokers, and uh, educational traders. Uh, so I want to thank Tom of Capital Discussions for giving us the opportunity, and I truly hope I'll be able to paint a picture of what options gave offers to the trading community when it comes to identifying risk and potential, uh, risk and profit potential throughout the life of the portfolio as you construct and dissect your strategies at any level. And it really goes from beginner to intermediate to advanced. It's a pretty, pretty serious uh, levels of uh, trading expertise. Uh, you can you can also uh, visit us uh, after we're finished, uh, if you would like, at uh, www.optionscape.us. A um, little bit of background on the, uh, the company itself. Uh, and I, I'm hoping you can see the screen as you know, that is up there right now. Uh, uh, John, yeah, you need to reshare it. Okay. Uh, walk, walk me through on it. To get back. Okay, there's a share menu, or you can try Control Alt D, like desktop or Delta. Oh. You see the share menu? Okay. Okay. I'm back on the round table. I lost the share menu. There we go. Is Optionscape back on? Yep, I we see it now. Okay, thank you, thank you. Um, okay, I'll uh, pick up where uh, where I was, and I'm, I'm glad I asked that because I, I didn't realize that. Um, but uh, just a little bit of background on Optionscape uh, was developed and really meticulously refined over about a dozen years uh, as a key educational tool to help market participants understand what they're learning or have learned in many cases when it comes to building strategies and forecasting the risk in your position. Uh, forecasting features are unique and the visualization as you will see is three dimensional. Uh, two if you prefer. Uh, you get a clear and accurate picture of market risk. Uh, Optionscape is designed to assist trader educators uh, mainly uh, with their options traders from as I said beginner to advance. Uh, the capabilities and results are analysts you know, based on your level of expertise. So now that uh, I've opened up, uh, I have opened the, uh, the Optionscape uh, uh, 
page here, which is actually called the, uh, the Strategy Builder. What I would like to do is first walk you through how it's pretty user friendly, and and we also do have a uh, really very very well done, well written uh, uh, user guide to uh, to walk through on this. Um, so you know, walking through this experience, the uh, each of these, and in fact, I'll, I'll just go through this uh, the screen first, and then. What I'd like to do is just show you, uh, you know, just really for demo purposes here, uh, starting out with uh, setting up a long call. I've got IBM up here as an example. Uh, set up a long call, uh, walk through the different uh, visuals and the different uh, uh, identities and the different menu at the top, and then set it into a, into a uh, perhaps a vertical spread. And uh, then we'll take a look at it from that standpoint too. Uh, as we get a little farther through this, I'll try to wrap it up a bit. So, uh, so if you'll bear with me here, the, uh, you can see here that the I have my my pointer on the stripes. You can see along the bottom, you have all the stripes from IBM. This is this is uh, two day old data. It's end of day market data. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to in the strategy builder right click on there. I'm going to Scroll down, I have the stock right here. I have all the calls here, and I have all the puts here. So if I want to go out, let's say, to October of 16, and I can just go to the right, left click, it, and there's your famous hockey stick graph. And that will show that you just uh, put on the, uh, uh, the call, the long call. Now, just if you Follow on the bottom here because you can always come back to the strategy builder if you want to double check any of this information. But it's the 160 call and it's the October 16. We did one, it just defaults to one. You can put any number you want in there. Uh, it'll give the, the trade price and it'll give you applied volatility. So you can you can see over on this on the right hand side here, you can see what the cost is. In this case it costs six hundred and fifty dollars. So um, so what, what we would do here, again, here's your the spot price as of the day of your uh, training course when you're learning. And the uh, I will then do something here, and then I'll come back. Is I want to transfer this into a, uh, a three-dimensional uh, snapshot for you. So as we look at, there are a number of different pieces that we're going to use here as you go across. Uh, but this one here, payout, comes comes back about every time we, we want to update something. That that is the key to be like, you know, enter, you know, or update. And so if we hit the payout on this long call, it'll show here comes the box. All we need to do is click and here is it's going to recalculate uh, in a three dimensional picture. Now the nice part here is it's pretty pretty straightforward is that you've got all of your dates on the side here. You've got your prices here, and you've got your money over here. Now, I'm using my right mouse to move this around just to get it to the point where I kind of want to enjoy my view of this. You know, so I will take it and I'll bring it back where I had it before. And what what happens is in the in the beginning, before the classes start, before the you know the program goes, there are some settings that are made, and those settings can be it's up to the instructor, it's up to you know the group, you know, and how you set this up. But you see in, in the middle here, and, and things are happening when I move this, but there's a this this shaded area and this shaded area is a preset of the settings here, um, confidence level that if you look at it here, that you're predicting a ninety eight percent confidence level that the market is going to stay within that range for the life of this, this uh, option. So you can, you can, this can be changed. The trading fund amount for demo purposes and for classroom happens at this, in this case, to be $10,000. Uh, uh, it defaults the risk-free rates. Again, I can show you how we can change all of that. Then you've got your, you know, you would add in your brokerage, you would add in uh, the margins, the margin calculations, you know, which, which can be enabled, which have to be down here. Uh, the scanning range here varies depending on whether you're talking about a $60 Stock or a two thousand dollar stock. Um, so we will; these will all come into play here 
um, as, uh, as, we, as we actually show the pictures. So, um, that. Okay, so what we want to do next is we, we this, this black line here in the middle, and, and as you see, my yellow line is moving. And what it's doing here is it is showing that, and, and the key is to look up here. In fact, I'm going to freeze this. Uh, I can stop this and right there it turns on the agenda uh, by left clicking. Now, here's what it's telling me up top here is that on the 30th of August, and this is for forecasting. You know, this is, and, and as, we, as we build these strategies into uh, uh, you know, a little bit more complexity, uh, you know, you're going to want to look out just to see if there's something that, that in your estimation, uh, could, you might be able to prevent something from happening. Perhaps uh, a landmine is going to show up here. And so if you want to look at any given date and time and any market value, you can see if you follow where these, uh, these intersecting lines are, it's showing you that on the 30th of August, uh, IBM's at 161, and the payout at that point is uh, 70 is a loss of 75 dollars because here's you're sitting in this uh, area right here. If we change it, you know, here, the green, of course, is going to be the profit side. So this is showing based on the September 7th uh, date. If the market is up 184, you're going to be up almost 1800. So, uh, but. Most, most of the time, what you want to do is you want to say, I don't, I think this market's probably going to move around a little bit, so I want to do something with this black line. Let's go up top here to market scenario. And market scenario here is going to give me the opportunity. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to draw the line here, and I'm going to say that this market's probably not going to be that flat, so I'm going to kind of move it around a little bit, bring it down, up again and then bring it back where it was. Okay, that's that's the way I want to look at my positions. In the event that this happens, uh, I'd like to be able to see what my what my call is going to look like. So what I uh, what I would do is remember go back over this payout, and now we're going to see how that black line changed. I have to recalculate. We'll recalculate. So I am going to go back to the market scenario. I'm going to reset this. I'm going to do this again. And this, this is I don't know why maybe it's hard to uh, the, uh, the web Drive one of the things here. Okay, all right. Uh, here we go, right here. See how this has changed. Now this is this is this comes in line with what I just did when I moved my market scenario around. So if the market does move and uh, I, I can freeze it at a certain point, uh, maybe in, in this area here. Uh, then I can see that if, if IBM is at 167, then my payout is uh, $270 in September. Would be on September 16th. Uh, also, at the same time, we have all these numbers. So, uh, okay, so I can then take a look at it. At, Move, move my uh, cursor around to the different underlying prices and take a look at exactly where uh, my, my payout should be at this point. Now, I can also then go into an interest rate scenario, and this is where we actually set it up in the settings. You know, and if, if interest rates are, uh, you know, going to move a little bit, I don't know, we play with it a little. It's not going to probably have that much of an effect on it. But you, what it does do is it shows you you have the ability to make your estimates. I mean, the, the whole thing is your forecast in the future. And if you think rates are going to rise a little bit, then you know what? Raise them up and let's see what it will look like. You know, this is on your, uh, on your position. So uh, let's 
look at the payout and recalculate that. And uh, Hey, John, we had a quick question in the chat. Is yeah. this web-based software or desktop, and are the calculations done on your local machine or on a server? No, on a server. Yeah, we did the uh, – it, 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 so it is web-based, and, uh, yeah, uh, with me just one second. Um, yeah, um, you, you can do this – actually, you, you download it on your desktop, and, because all these changes are made right on your machine right there. This is not live, uh, live I see Frank Johnson answered. He must be with you guys. Yeah, Frank is. Oh, Frank is the uh, the founder of uh, of Optionscape, and uh, Frank is actually responding from Perth, Australia. Ah, okay. Yeah, and Ozzy. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, he's uh, he's lived there for quite some time, and he's the uh, uh, the brains behind the uh, the operation here, and he was the founder. And, Basically, has all the technical aspects of this. Uh, and I, I, sorry, but I didn't see the answer. Um, yeah, he said uh, recalculation checks for user registration on a server in Australia. Internet connection can be slow sometimes. Mirror yeah. servers will be set up in the U.S. Yeah. And I've promoted yeah. Frank to a panelist, so if he wants to call in, then you know, and join in, that's fine. Okay, I think I think he could, but it's such a bad, it's a long distance connection, and uh, it might not be. Uh, but you know, it, he's more than, more than welcome to, to pop in. So that's that's cool. Great. Yep. Okay. Okay. So again, what what we're what we're looking at here is uh, basically a, a simple uh, long call. Um, what I what I would like to do is you know because you know there was not going to be the margins or anything on that. We have to see what that looks like. For Long call. Um, you know, we could actually go through. Uh, you know, it might be might be more interesting to look at this when we have a, a different position on. But you know, here's your delta, you know, which is uh, all displayed, uh, and we have the opportunity to uh, raise it at a certain point, and uh, uh, actually move it. You know, move it around for the different uh, the, the prices of the underlying, and for every point moved here, you're going to be able to see again up in the uh, the right hand corner uh, what uh, what the effect is on the deltas. Uh, same same goes for the gamma. Uh, you know, this here you can look at delta to delta and see what the effect is uh, at the different stock price at the different stock prices on the different dates. So uh, the gamma is uh, uh, seven point six three. Uh, Theta, which everybody's familiar with, is the time decay, and the same thing happens here. We can move this around to find out as time goes by uh, how much uh, time decay that we're losing here. And you can see right down the last is zero. Uh, and uh, same thing with volatility with the Vega. Uh, these these can be these these graphs will change as we change the uh, the variables up here. But you can also Forecast. You take a look at you know, the different uh, the different dates, the different market levels, and also be able to uh, uh, figure out what what the, the Vega would be on a one percent or maybe on the one. So, so what what I would like to do is make this thing a little bit more fun. Is at least create a, a vertical spread. So you now we can look down here. We're long we're long the one sixty. So let's see if we wherever we move the cursor here, you're going to see where the uh, where the uh, the strike is. So we're on the 165 strike. So if we get down to the October 16 and sell one of these guys, then what we're going to have is the picture of the vertical. So here again is your this is your home base for looking at where your positions are. Uh, here's comes down to where your cost is. Uh, you know you can see that's going to be where the risk is on this. And what I want to do then is take a quick look at uh, the payout on that one, and now we got a little bit different picture here. So if we take a look at. Uh, let's see, now remember, we have implied volatility has moved. Uh, we have the market scenario has moved. Uh, we've already set that up, so we know that we know where we set it when we put the next leg on it. Right. So we can, we can reset all this just by hitting the reset. We'll hit the interest rate reset. 
and hit the implied volatility reset, bring it all back down to where it was. Uh, I believe the market scenario will. And uh, so when we when we take a look at the uh, here to get the update, and now it's kind of a little bit you know, cleaner picture here of what the uh, what the vertical looks like. Green area, of course, is the profit, as you can see up on the right. Uh, the uh, ex expected probability of where the underlying is going to be is in this area that I'm, I'm hitting right here. And then, of course, the maximum loss here is 145, and that's going to be all on the bottom of the red area. Uh, again, this is our market scenario. If we think it's going to change, uh, or we want to look at it as if it's going to change, then we go back up in here, and we just say, okay, let's reset that, and uh, let's say that market could take a little bit of that. Uh, and uh, we can get the payout on that one, we calculate, and here's what that's going to look like. And so you want to follow this uh, this line here because if you freeze it, again, you can see up here in the right hand corner uh, where it is, uh, what this is at this time. So let's see if we move uh, uh, to probably some of the more. Interesting ones. Let's look, let's look at margin. Uh, well, this is probably uh, well. Now uh, let's let's go back here to explain some of this. Um, you know, the the liquidation, for example, the liquidation value on this. Um, you know, what if the uh, <coughs> So this is what would this is what it would look like if the position was closed out at any one of these given points. At one of those down here. <coughs> okay. Okay, in, in this example, if the stock drops down to 151 in September, uh, the liquidation value is 33. So <clears throat> what this will uh, help you do, like many of the other features, is you may be changing your mind and your view as time goes by, and you need to make some adjustments to these positions, or you're going to build this up. You might be building this up somehow into a butterfly. Um, but as you're doing it, you kind of want to see where the, the key points are, you know, throughout the uh, uh, you know, throughout the life of this of this strategy. And you know, you you're not limited to, uh, to anything. Any particular uh, types of strategies? You know, our, our people do a lot of time spreads. They do diagonals. They do uh, verticals. They do their uh, you know their butterflies, and, and they can get pretty pretty sophisticated on this. So, you know, the, the point is is when you're ready to set up your scenario, you want to see where this is going to go. And you want to get the forecast uh, out. So, uh, <coughs> let's see if there's your cash level. I mean, this is this tells you. I mean, you know, we, we started it with uh, ten thousand in this, in this particular case, you know, and, and you know that's where it is. I mean, it's at nine nine eight fifty five, you know, which is uh, you know, less what we take for the spread. Uh, but it's the market the market exposure uh, would be uh, basically the liquidity. It's a risk visualization. It's the, really a percent. Of available funds that are subject to margin calls, and as we get into different strategies, that might become more important. And also, the percentage of available funds subject to loss if all option positions are closed. So, this is actually not giving us a not really telling you things on this particular strategy, but I just wanted to explain kind of what the exposure uh, was on that. Um, so, uh, let's see, then of course, from the um, we have the Greeks. Uh, what uh, uh, I want to do here is create something that uh, might be a little bit more interesting for people who have uh, larger or different types of positions on. And what I what I can do here is I go back to the strategy builder. Now, if I want to clean the clean the slate out here, what I do is I basically click on the symbol and hit the delete. And it'll ask me if I want to delete it. Yes. And then I will do the same thing with my uh, 165. And I will delete it and start fresh. So 
what I want to do here is make this maybe a little bit more colorful and create a different kind of a spread, a different kind of a strategy. And what I thought I would do is move it into one of the, uh, the bearish side to the broken wing butterfly and set this up. And then we can go through uh, changing the market scenarios and, and you know, just seeing you know, if, if, if our expectations are accurate, uh, you know, what, uh, what can we expect to happen here. So um, what I would do here is I want to get down to uh, sell two of the at the money calls. And you see I have only it defaults to one, so I'm going to do two. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to look at the 170 call. And I'm going to click that. And I'm going to go down to uh, the uh, October 16th. And I'm going to buy one of those guys. Okay. So I'm working my way up here. Now I want to go down to the, uh, the 155 call. And I'll right click on that. So up here you can see the strike price, 155. Then I'll go down to the same month. We don't have to be doing the same months on any of these, obviously. But the thing is, you have to play with it. You have to practice with it. You have to give yourself the opportunity to, to try the different scenarios that make sense to you personally. So I want to buy one of those guys. Okay, so here I can look at that. I want to double check to make sure I did the right ones. So I got the 155 strike on long, 160. I am short two, and the 170, I'm long one. So again, we can see the two-dimensional side of this, this here. But let's take a look at it on the uh, 3 d side. Oh, it's just it's probably a little bit of a delay because of the connection here. So I will be more patient than that. Okay, so this is I mean I can turn this any way I want to look at it. Um, and you know it's just it's whatever I'm comfortable with. And this is what the uh, this uh, uh wing butterfly would look like. Let's check it out at different dates, at different times, because we may want we may have this position on for a while. But let's at least say, if it works in our favor, because it's a bearish spread, that where, where should we maybe get out? Maybe where we should take, uh, make some adjustments, whatever the case may be. Because remember, you're, you're in class right now trying to figure out how to do this in the event that you change your strategy on. Again, here's your market scenario. Uh, here's your, your uh, probability of where the market's going to be. But you want to take a look at, you want to forecast something here uh, that is going to I mean, if you go up in, into the green here, we'll see that it's pretty much it's, it's 55. I mean, that's that's where uh, that's where you're going to make it. That's how much data the data is. However, when you start to move down into here, um, uh, move into this area, I should say. Uh, All right, here are the prices again. So, if, again, it would make sense that if at the, at the 200, uh, you know, if the stock, well, if the stock even reached 180, and we were, uh, let's see, 180, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, okay. <clears throat> now, what we're doing here is we're we're starting to uh, to see some some pain, a little bit of pain on this particular strategy because the market's going up, not what we wanted. This range, uh, or at least in here. And so on the uh, 17th of September, which is over here, uh, we would be looking at a uh, that position being down about 280 bucks, $282. Always up here. Um, so if we want to make a little adjustment here to the uh, market scenario, and take it down, going down. Uh, Make the same maneuvers that we did with the other spreads over there. So, in fact, 
the uh, if, if this the market changes and we end up somewhere in the uh, let's say the 145 level, let's make a little bit more fun. Uh, as time goes by, oh, let's let a little time go by here. So let's get up to the first of October and let's see as the market to get down. So the third of October. Let's raise it. All right, let's raise it back. So we got the seventh of October. Uh, the market's at one sixteen, and you're at that uh, that fifty five dollar uh, uh, return. On this. So, so that's pretty much gonna that's gonna stay unless this uh, stock starts to rise. And if it starts going up, you're gonna see what's gonna happen here up in the right hand side, and you're gonna have to, you have to be careful. And this is this is where you want to look out and say, okay, if I have this position on. And the market is not going to go too much likely, but uh, let's say we don't know uh, the volatility could go through the ceiling. Something could happen here. But when you get you know to that point where you, you're managing your risk, I mean you, if that's the whole key to this. Is you, you manage the risk, and the returns obviously will come later if you're doing this properly. So you know you can just freeze that guy right there. You know so if that stock does end up going up uh, at uh, you know in, in September. And it's working its way up, it's sneaking its way up. You can see on the payout that you're starting to lose money here. So, you know, there might need to be an adjustment, you know, change a leg, add a leg, take off a leg, whatever it might be. But just make sure that whatever you're doing, that you're going to get up and spread out. This is one of the things your trader educator is going to be promoting and pushing is uh, be careful, you know, when you're doing these and when you're making the adjustment. You know, today's lesson might be, you know, creating for the first time ever a butterfly. But, you know, Understand the risk is all, it's, uh, you know, what the return is, it's all explained to you. You can maneuver it around to make it a Polish one, you can make it a bearish one, uh, whatever it may be. Uh, you can create diagonal spreads. You can also calculate uh, uh, the margin, which is all uh, basically based on span margin. And, uh, you know, for uh, uh, any for any of the uh, any of the positions, and, and in this case, about to state that uh, I'm, I'm using the uh, Interactive brokers here, uh, IBM, but you know it also applies to all the CME, uh, which is also includes all the board of trade, uh, options products, Tivo, uh, uh, Reuters, and uh, IB, and there are more coming. Eurex so is, uh, is on the platter, uh, and uh, they're going to they're going to continue to uh, make themselves available because it's a global company. Uh, even though a lot of you know, there are any ever any questions uh, that require any kind of support. On, on any of the uh, use, uh, users can always uh, tap in. We have a uh, call center, even though we're global, we have a call center here in the United States that's right on top of it. And there are people that are using it. So, uh, so but again, we're, we're doing this kind of demo here, uh, which is not very complex. Uh, it goes from beginner to, to pretty popular, which I think this is a fairly popular strategy. But uh, now you can also then look at the liquidation value. Line allows you to to wherever you want to coincide with them on the bottom axis the stock price on the right to date and on the left to money. So uh, if we want to so if you, you know that's that's what you can see it on the right hand side. I mean you know, if the market's at one fifty eight and the liquidation value is fifty eight. Uh, cash levels the delta this is uh, this is kind of uh, the uh, if, you, if you again move this around and if you, you all pretty much know what the effect what the delta is when you move to the underlying is you can get if, and this is showing you in terms of US dollars. Uh, so if it's the uh, underlying is at one fifty five on September twenty third, uh, then we're talking about a, a three point nine nine. And the same would happen with the gamma. Uh, and especially as you get closer, closer to uh, expiration, uh, you can see basically where you know where the delta of the delta is. And it's going to be down to at the end here. Let's go. So uh, take a look at this any way you want. Uh, 
very good time to tag. You kind of know what that picture is going to look like uh, because here's what's going to happen. It's going to these things decay, as you know, probably at the most rapid pace uh, in the last couple of weeks, the last two weeks. So depending on any any of the strategies you have on, uh, the, uh, uh, I probably would like to just show something here. And I, I don't know. I mean, at least for visual purposes, uh, just what would happen if um, we just had some short calls. Because I want I want to go for the margin. So I want to delete that guy, okay? And I'm going to get rid of the other long guy. Now, of course, that's your clear hockey stick graph on the short fall, short falls. And we want to get new calculation here. Okay, so we can move it around. I think everybody will figure out this takes a thousand words, this picture. Uh, we still have the market scenario set up the way we want it. Uh, we can go back and we still don't, you know, we, haven't made, we haven't done anything with the volatility. But actually, we can do something a little bit here. Uh, now I don't want to do, get up as ridiculous and do a 9-11 type thing. But uh, if we do the payout and recalculate, uh, here's what you're going to see. Let's say uh, an increase uh, in the implied volatility is going to change your picture around here. You know, and again, take take your cursor, you know, where you want your, your short short two calls. Um, this, the underlying's up down up to 164. It's, it's August, uh, which is you know you know a little bit later than, than today. And uh, you're down 2,200 bucks. So I think you know most most people uh, they wouldn't sit there with these anymore anyway, especially expecting a volatility move like that. But what it does is it allows you to say, okay, if I did that, when am I going to take corrective action? What do I have to do? Because what's going to happen? You know how you know how much money is in your account. You know, let's let's go take a look at the margin side of this thing. You know, and what what will happen here is as as this you know your your this area you know your margin requirement is September 22nd if the stock even is at 184 it's uh, uh, 5600 bucks. Well, then, I, I'm not sure I like the looks of this one right here. Okay, so there, we just passed the amount of money we have in the account anyway. So um, at uh, at this price, you know, which, again, I doubt you would be holding on to this, this call for this long. But on that date, then you can, you can cal pretty quickly calculate what your margin uh, requirement would be. And, and, you know, it could end up being uh, uh, this one here where you don't, you don't take action, you're going to obviously get a margin. Uh, you know, but you know, this is all based on the uh, the span margin, which is a clearing uh, clearinghouse margin. But of course, you know, the firms have their own. We set their own. You know, uh, the brokers have their own levels on this. But you know, we need to do it on something that's consistent. Uh, as we're you know, developing our markets, uh, we will be incorporating the Prisma system into uh, into this. So uh, more and more uh, the, the firms and professionals are using that. And uh, so that's uh, that's happening uh, right now. So um, so I think you know what we what we did here was we you know try to uh, you know the delta here. This is kind of a, uh, you can see uh, again you can move it around and say okay I'm, I've got this position on uh, maybe a little dangerous for some of us in the room, uh, but at least if you want to look at it and say you know at what point in time. At what level uh, and at what pain threshold do I need to make some adjustments to this position? And I go back to my strategy builder and realize, yep, I'm still short two calls. So, you know, maybe what I should do is uh, maybe, uh, maybe buy two. And let's see what happens here on uh, uh, October. So, let's see, buy. Remember, we, we haven't changed the market scenario. Uh, we, we do have a pretty crazy effect. We should probably set this uh, because that's going to be moved. Uh, we, can, we can do uh, change the volatilities for each leg of this. So here's the ox, the 55 call. 
So if we think that, you know, the vol, you know, is going to kind of dip maybe a little bit and back up again, uh, then we can set that. Uh, this is all user-friendly. You can do this. Let's go into the uh, 160 ball. And, you know, it may follow it to some degree, but, you know, you, you know it, let's keep it sort of close. Um, and then what we can do is now change it, recalculate it. And there's a new picture with a little bit of uh, implied volatility changing around. And on this spread, you can see down here, uh, you know, there's a, there's a little, you know, look, look at the dates on this. You know, and the dates coincide with when the dates when we did this. Like here, this is September. You know, we're, we have a little bit of bump in here. Uh, then it gets back flat again, you know, in the, uh, you know, during September. But here's going to be that little little dip in the, uh, in the payout, <coughs> which is going to show you can you can figure the dates out right there. It's September 4th, uh, you know, with, uh, with the underlying just down a little bit, you know, we can get it up to uh, you know, where we're even closer to that moment here, uh, the 158. And you can see that uh, you're going to be out, you're going to be looking at uh, 119 uh, negative here. Looking up at here, you can make 647 bucks on this thing. You know, so you know, that's uh, you know, as, as the uh, as the underlying you know, gets up to you know, these different levels. Uh, you know, anything above here, you know, here's your confidence level. You know, you're still if it stays in an area, you're up 425 dollars. If it stays, if it's starting to drop on you, uh, it's still within the confidence level, but you're down, you're only on 32 bucks. Now we're going to see a little bit of change here. So we'll start into the we're not quite the red zone yet, but we're and now we're going to be down, and we're going to be out to about fifty dollars. So, uh, so these are these are just a, only a touching tip of the iceberg as to what types of strategies throughout the learning process um, that you can design. You can set them up. You can take the variables. You can move them around. You're forecasting out. You want to make sure that if there's a certain point in time you need to make an adjustment to your position. Uh, show me what would happen, and that's what Optionscape is doing here for you. Uh, it's giving a very, very thoroughly back uh, result as to what your spread or your your, your position would look like uh, at any given time before expiring. And what it'll do, even with these margins, is it'll calculate it out as a package. So if you had IBM positions out six months or whatever, whatever you stock you're trading. Um, it, will, it will do that. It will take everything into, into consideration. The October's, the next one, the next one, all the way out to your last leg. If you happen to have some diagonal spreads, it's all calculated in there. So you don't have to be worried about it. You get it in one shot, one press of the button, and you can see what the picture says. And like I said earlier, it pays a thousand dollars. So I, I hope this is helpful. I hope it's interesting. I, I think it's a terrific tool. Uh, and it is, it is a tool for strategy building and, and taking a look at managing your risk. So, uh, you know, let's know, uh, let Tom know, you know, if there's anything that, uh, that we can do, we can provide. And we, we hope that this was uh, interesting enough that we get invited back. So thank you so much, Tom and the group. Most appreciated. Uh, John Dempsey signing out. Hope to see or meet somebody somewhere down the road. Thank you. Okay, thanks, John. We uh, we did have some questions. If you can stick around a few more yeah, minutes. Sure, sure. Okay. Um, do you guys support uh, futures options? That was one of my questions. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. And then, uh, yeah. what what data Actually, sources do you, are you using? Like broker quotes or e-signal or what? What kind of data um, feeds your software? What what we're doing with, uh, like for example, this the, uh, the, between Thomson Reuters uh, and CME. You know, see the end of day data, which covers all the board of trade, you know, former board of trade products. So commodity, commodity options, um, and uh, uh, you know, futures, interest rate futures, uh, uh, forex. Uh, you know, it's all it's all pretty much covered. But you know, a lot of the uh, the users that we have kind of that are, that are doing the futures options kind of kind of lean right now towards the CMEs uh, market data. And the market so. Data. So do the users provide their own data, or do you provide data for them through the software? Well, through the software, they can connect in. And, and uh, like, for example, if you were teaching the class today and you wanted to do uh, e-minis, for example, you would go right into the end-of-day data from the CMA, and, you know, because it's, it's already expired, 
and you would actually be able to put that in, and all the students would have it in front of them. Okay, that. and then Rich, Rich asked that if a data source isn't currently supported, do you guys have an API for users to add their own? Uh, yep, we have Frank. If Frank wants to pop in on that one, I uh, would appreciate it because he's been doing that work with uh, the technical side of it. Uh, Sure. Um, a lot of our uh, a lot of our community members use the Thinkorswim or uh -huh. Interactive Brokers. Do you guys support those two? Yeah, Interactive Brokers. Yes, we have that. Uh, and that's what that's what we're actually using right here. Okay. Uh, yeah. What, um, I, what I did actually, Tom, in the uh, uh, when I when I set up the uh, the beginning. Uh, Here, this is Interactive Brokers right here, and you have the CME, you got tons of Reuters, uh, their demo version, their standalone version. So, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, what you would do is you would choose it like here. You chose Interactive Brokers, and then what you would do is it would you take, you know, you would do this before the class story. It would take a, a, a you know, minute or two. It's got to it's got a load of stuff. So, uh, but, uh, I don't know. Is Frank still with us? Or? Uh, he's still here, yep. He said the uh, IB Trader Workstation and whatever data you have subscriptions to. Uh -huh. And uh, Rich says if we don't have a CBOE data subscription, do we have to pay for it? I, I would think so. Uh, yeah, but, uh, you know, I would say unless, I mean, if, if it's the end of the day, uh, you know what, let me, let me double check that one with the CBOE. Uh, can I get back to you, Tom, on that? Yeah, unless, that's fine. Right, though, yeah, yeah, because... Uh, you know, we, we, we work mainly with the uh, uh, the equity side, and uh, you know, which is what we're working on here. And, and a lot of the, a lot of the people want the future stuff. So, uh, but if we can do that and get back, I'm just make a note. And then Rich asked another question: Is it licensed by subscription or purchase? I, th I think it's not purchase, but uh, I don't know. It's, is uh, there any annual cost? No, there's a it's a li it's a licensing, uh, and you know, there are a number of different ways you can do this. Uh, Monthly, uh, annually, uh, by time, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a monthly. Uh, it's basically uh, most popular with a monthly subscription, or depending on the size of the group, an annual. But uh, but we can feed Tom. We can give you all of those because we're on the website. We can give you all of the different uh, choices and, and ideas if you don't mind uh, sending that back out. If you go through, we'll probably take another hour. Uh, oh sure. Yeah, but, um, uh, yeah, it's a subscription. It's a license fee. Yes. Okay, great. And then another question I had is, can you save positions? Yes, you know, absolutely. Quick, okay. Yes, absolutely. And uh, that you got your, your all your buttons are up here on the top. Printing reports. Uh, you can get in here and you can you can reset the layout. Uh, you, can, you can do the file. You can save uh, right here. If you want to hear saving a strategy. So I can put it you know, wherever I want to do it so that I can, when I come back, I can pick up right where I left off. I you can load it. Uh, you can set up, this is how you set up a new strategy. You just go right here to the left. And what you would do is you would name it. So you, you name it Tom. And then you fill in, you know, the, the, the different, all the, all the right information here. And you have a brand new, fresh strategy. Like if I start to unwind what I'm doing here, it'll take a while. That's really what you need to do is you have to look at the, uh, the that, um, the, uh, the ability to set up a, a new strategy here. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's very, very flexible. Uh, you know, it's very hands-on. Uh, again, if, um, you know, I, I, when I, in the beginning, because I've been doing this for a while, uh, I went right to that user guide and went, this is fantastic. I mean, you know, it's not one of those 300 pages long user guide. It walks you right through the nuts and bolts of how to get logged on. Uh, you know, then, now once once you, you know, get up to the point where there's a subscription and you're actually using it, uh, then all of that other stuff becomes available. All the call center business, uh, you know, any any other markets that are that are coming about uh, would be would be available. Uh, it, you know, it depends on um, uh, on the individuals because every every person listening here has probably got a different different idea. 
Now, is this uh, only with live data, or do, is there a historical data too? This is back of, tester. Well, it's end of day. It's it's really for forward testing. It's for forward uh, stress testing. Uh, okay. You know, they had, you know, they had the, like you know, we have a university that uses it, and you know, they they didn't have a stress version, so you know, they they can they can let it they can look at stuff from last month or whatever, but they really they're really not doing the same thing that our audience here is doing uh, with their students. But uh, you know, if, if it's uh, you know end of day data from 25 days ago, then you have 25 days of, of back testing that's right there. Right. You know, but it's really designed for forecasting my risk. What, what's going to happen to my position? I won't be around for a long time, uh, so let me look forward on this thing because you have other programs where you can look at some of that stuff. And, but you know, this is to really roll up your sleeves and, and learn. And uh, I trade SPX a lot, but there's a lot mm -hmm. of strikes. Um, is mm -hmm. there a, like a strike filter where you can kind yes. of limit what you're seeing? Absolutely. If you go back to the settings over here, uh, you can do the display range. You know, and okay, perfect. You, know, you can you can make that anything. Well, I, I hear you on that one. A lot of people like to take them down to uh, the ones that are most likely to be used. So yes, everything is configurable in here. You know, and uh, you just you just test what's comfortable for you. You know, change these things around, but like, you know, you don't want all of these trucks along the bottom where you want, or if there are more, then it's easily it's easily done just by a couple of clicks here. Well, great. That uh, that does it for my questions. I don't see any more um, in the chat. Well, if you and get any, let up... me know. If you get them, let me know, and I'll uh, I'll, I'll get you. Yeah, maybe. If you, uh, if, you uh, if you put your email in the chat, if anybody has questions, maybe they could just send them directly to you. Or maybe okay. is there a support email that's better? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's all on the uh, on the uh, uh, optionscape.us. Um, so I, I would highly highly recommend the contact section. And, uh, okay, it, perfect. Yeah, that's the, that way it's, it goes through one central you know spot you know, rather than. You know, shooting me something, shooting the call center something, shooting Frank something. Uh, uh, but we'll, we'll make sure that we get the answer. No question. Yeah. All right. Well, well, John, I think uh, that wraps up all the questions, and I really appreciate okay. the, the look at your software. It's very interesting. I hope so. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope everyone got something out of it. And, and if, if we can, you know, bump it up to the next level at some point in time, please just let us know. We'll be happy to do it. And hopefully it's not too hot in Chicago, so you can stay cool. I'm I'm in my office. I have no idea. <laughs> no, it's, it's, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty hot. You know, so uh, but yeah, you know, we're enjoying it because winter will be here before we know it. And, uh, yeah, then you'll be wishing it was August again, right? Uh, yes, exactly. Yeah, I'll be wishing I'm where you are. So, okay. Cool. All right, John. Well, again, thanks very much. Appreciate everyone uh, sticking through. And uh, I'll get this recording posted, and uh, I'll send it to you guys, too, if you want to use it. And uh, thanks again, John. We'll hope to have you back in the future. Thank you. And thank you for, uh, to the group for, uh, for sticking with us here. And uh, uh, we hope that, uh, hope that you had, uh, had some uh, sort of enjoyment and learned something out of it. And uh, it, it, we're really happy to be able to do this. So thank you all. Appreciate it. All right. Bye -bye. Thanks. See you.